Welcome to today's Ask Me Scott Skills webinar series. Today's presentation is Connecting with People to Make Ask Me Strong. Jerry Fittler, Political Action Representative from the Political Action Department, is your presenter for today's session. My name is Shondell Day, and I'm with the Education Department here at Ask Me International, and I will be your host for today's session. Before we begin, I would like to go over a few housekeeping notes. We encourage you to use your telephone in order to participate in the Q&A at the end of the session. Please select Use Telephone after joining the webinar and call in using the numbers provided once you sign on. Be sure to use the audio pin shown after joining the webinar. All the participant lines will be muted throughout the presentation. Lines will be opened up for a quick Q&A at the end of today's session. If you have questions along the way, please enter them using the chat feature to put them into the queue. We will try to stop and go over some of your answers, some of the answers to your questions. Please take the survey at the exit of this webinar to receive your certificate of participation. You will be sent a certificate by the close of the next business day. Please be reminded that this session will be recorded. Thank you all. And now I will turn the session over to Jerry. Hi, everyone. Thanks for dialing in uh, today. My name is Jerry Fiddler, and I work for you as a political action representative out of the National Union's Political Action Department. This webinar provides us with an opportunity to discuss AFSCME's Voluntary Political Action Committee, known as the People PAC. We will assist you and other union activists by providing information and tools for you to use immediately. This webinar will help you conduct productive, more confident one-on-one -on -one conversations about politics, political action, and soliciting contributions to the People PAC. All of you are either deeply involved in the AFSCME Strong campaign or you will soon become deeply involved. We would like to take a moment to thank you all for the work you're devoting to the AFSCME Strong program. You are willing to work to make this union stronger at a time when we're facing challenges to our very existence. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing today. And most of all, thank you for what you will be doing in the days ahead. One of the components of a solid union building AFSCME strong conversation with a member or a potential member is a brief discussion of the people pack and an ask that they contribute to people. Contributions come in many forms. Our members may voluntarily contribute their money, their time, or preferably both. Almost nobody will contribute to anything unless they are asked to do so in a proper conversation. You'll soon see that by adding information and following the tips we present, it's easy to recruit people members and contributions. Some of today's presentation may be new to you, and some of it may not. The complete presentation, however, is a roadmap for looking at the union's political program and our organizing activity, putting them together into one discussion and format that are easy to understand and convey to others. We are also going to present five commonly found objections to union politics and suggest a path to success in spite of those objections. So in this module, we will review the five steps of AFSCME Strong organizing conversations. We will learn how to overcome the five most commonly found objections to joining people. And we'll learn how to sharpen the way we ask others to contribute to the people pack. Talking with other members about politics and the People PAC is not nearly as difficult as you'd initially think. There are a few things you'll need to know about and add to the union conversations you're already having. Discussing these things here today is a good way to examine the facts and to think about how to incorporate them into your union organizing activities. It is important to understand the essentials of the People PAC, what it is, why we have it, and why our fellow union members should contribute to the program. With a clear description of the purpose of People PAC, how it helps us fulfill the union's mission, and how to encourage contributions, this module is designed to help build awareness and involvement in the program. Always remember, contributions to our People PAC are entirely voluntary, and members must be directly asked to join the program. Direct mail, 
phone calls, emails, and other impersonal solicitations are not effective ways to accomplish our activist recruitment and fundraising goals. Most union members who don't contribute to people don't do so because they've never been asked to do so. Some members who don't contribute to the program do not do so because of something they might believe or something they might have heard along the way. Convincing someone to sign is usually as simple as having one coherent conversation with them about the program and then asking them to join. By having meaningful conversations with these members, we are likely to introduce them to new information and present reasons why they should contribute to people. Through one-on-one -on -one conversations, we are often able to overcome common objections to politics and objections to our political program. In a few moments, we will explore several of these objections, and as we said, we'll discuss how to overcome each one of them. The only way to determine who is willing to contribute and who might object is to engage everyone in one-on-one, -on -one, eye-to-eye conversations about our union and their role in our union programs. Let's take a moment to look at a question. Please look at the following question and tell us what you think. Where is the best place to speak with a union member or potential union member about our union and the people program? Is it A, at home, B, at the workplace, C, anywhere the law allows us to, or D, all of the above? We are allowed to talk about our union and the people program nearly anywhere, as long as we are not expressly advocating the election or defeat of a specific candidate or ballot question. Any place you would normally talk about workplace issues, the union and our programs, would be a good place to add the people program to your union conversation. As always, if you're in doubt, give us a call and ask us. There is a big difference between talking about a union program and talking about partisan politics. Partisan politics should be avoided, but it's generally fine to discuss our union programs almost anywhere. People PAC, again, is a completely voluntary political action program. It's how our union builds and exercises the political strength we need to maintain and expand our rights, our protections, our salaries, and our benefits. Remember, everything we have is the result of the often fierce political and social battles we've already fought. Now the only way to hold on to what we have to secure a brighter future and provide for ourselves and our families is to continue the fight in the battles ahead of us. People Pack is a tool we use to help set a more positive, favorable political climate. We set this climate by fighting and winning issue-based battles. AFSME fights for issues directly related to our principles and our mission as a union. We only support political candidates and initiatives that are genuinely in support of our members, just as we fiercely oppose those candidates and initiatives that would, if they're enacted, harm workers and working families. It is clear that our People Pack helps us set the table for fulfilling the mission of our union. By forming a more positive political climate, we are more successful at organizing members, negotiating new contracts, enforcing and strengthening existing contracts, and securing our benefits. People helps us win and hold on to protections for workers and working families, and it helps us make safer and stronger the communities in which we work and live. Because of our political action, we are able to set the table. People fuels the political activities that allow us to win and hold on to the seat that we have at that table. Imagine for a moment that decisions about our rights, our wages, benefits, working conditions are made by a bunch of folks who sit around a table and decide who gets what and who wins disputes about how things are divided. When someone signs a union card, they gain access to the seat that our union literally has at the table. Whether we are public <clears throat> or private sector workers or retirees, a strong political presence is vital to our very existence. Our rights, our jobs, and the, our communities either exist or don't exist 
because of political decisions that are made at this table. The bottom line is easy to understand. Through politics, we can fight to hold on to what we have, we can work for what else we need, and we can fight back against those who want to take these things away from us. Or we could sit back. We could let others get involved in politics and watch all of these things, including our seat at the table, go to someone else who actually gets up, gets involved, and wins the fight. Individual contributions and efforts made by members of our union do indeed add up to a great deal of power and influence. And it all starts with us, you, how we engage other union members, and how we hold conversations with inactive members about the threats we are facing, and the importance of stepping up and getting involved in the fight. So how should we approach a conversation concerning the people program? One common myth is that we can write and follow a script or a pitch that replaces a successful one-on-one -on -one conversation. Well, reading a script is a lot like giving a speech, and speeches, as we know, are not conversations. Conversations are fluid. No two people are identical. No moment shared between two people can be replicated. Our best approach is a calm, factual conversation with someone that focuses on what they care about, that responds to what they think and how they react to the things we say to them. If you are simply adding the people pack to the union building conversations you're already having as part of the AFSCME Strong program, your chances of successfully recruiting a people contributor, a union activist, and a donor are substantially increased. Now remember the five steps for a successful union organizing conversation. They are step one, introducing yourself. Step two, getting the story, finding out what your coworkers care about. Step three, sharing the union vision, talking about how things can become better by building power, building strength, and building our union. The fourth step, assessing how receptive and supportive our coworkers can be and then moving them to action. And last, step five, inoculating them about the attacks that are to, gum, are to come against our union and against our livelihoods. When having a union organizing conversation, you'll mention the people program as part of steps three and four. In step three, you'll mention how people sets the table for strengthening workers. And in step four, you'll ask them to sign up and contribute to the people pack. A good conversation is one in which we use our ears twice as much as we use our mouths. Listening to someone speak allows them to review, reveal how they feel about the topics we've raised with them, provide the larger picture of what People Pack is and what it does, why we need it, and what we want them to do along with us. By focusing on local issues and victories, we're also more likely to convince someone to care about and contribute to the people program. Let's take a look at a question. What motivates someone to contribute something to our program? Is it A, they want to make a difference, B, they just want to get us out of their face, C, they don't really care, or D, they are rich and they really won't miss the money? One hundred percent of our participants say A. Well, of these choices, A would be correct, but it's certainly not the only thing that motivates someone to contribute. People find motivation from a variety of forces, and the best way to figure out someone's motivation is to actually have a face-to-face -face conversation with them. Try to guide the conversation, but not dominate it. Be clear and honest and factual. Lay out a few facts and talk briefly about the facts that you're talking with coworkers about the threats we are facing and the things we need to do together to respond to these threats. Most folks will join people if they are properly asked to do so. Some may offer objections based on something they believe or something they've heard along the way. Just because you don't agree with them or vice versa doesn't mean one of you is wrong about something. Try to understand someone's objection. Empathize with them and offer additional information about the matter. Then, ask them to join with others and take action to hold on to the seat we have at the table that allows us all to stay in the fight and 
fight for things that we need and deserve. Remember the formula for overcoming objections. When you encounter an objection, try this approach. First step, empathize. Second, briefly answer the objection that our coworker is raising. Step three, bring the conversation back to their issue and their motivation. And finally, ask them again to step up, get in the fight, and join by contributing to the People Pack. So let's try it out with a few of the more common objections we encounter. Let's take a look at the first objection. I don't have the time or money for this right now. OK. Here are some of the things that have helped us address this objection. Again, I don't have the time or money for this right now. There are a lot of demands on our time and finances right now, and it seems to be getting worse as time passes. Contributing to people is a quick, easy way to fight back against the individuals and the groups who are trying to take what we have and keep working families from getting ahead in today's economy. It really takes less than five minutes to sign up, and it only costs about $2 a week. Your contributions give us the strength to fight in elections and legislatures across the country to hang on to the seats we have at the table instead of being forced to sit back and settle for a place on the menu. So would you consider signing up and contributing to People Pack? Let's take a look at another objection. I don't want my union dues being spent on politics when there's no guarantee of winning anything. And even if we do win, who's to say they won't just turn around and stab us in the back? All right. Here are some objections that have helped us address this objection. And while we explore a path through this objection, please remember the formula for overcoming objections that we reviewed a few moments ago and that you'll find along the bottom of your screen. Again. Step one, empathize with them. This is how you might truly understand their objection. Then briefly answer their objection. Bring the conversation back to their issue and their motivation. And ask again for their support and participation. So the objection, I don't want my union dues being spent on politics when there's no guarantee of winning anything. And even if we do win, who's to say they won't just turn around and stab us in the back? It's natural to look for sure bets or guarantees, but the reality is that very few outcomes are truly guaranteed. There is, however, at least one guarantee in politics. If you're not in the fight, you are guaranteed to lose. We cannot, by law, use union dues money to fight most of our battles against politicians, so that's why we have the People Pack. One way to avoid being stabbed in the back is to avoid electing politicians who speak out against workers and against working families. People gives us the ability to fight against our opponents and support those who will stand with us when it counts. So would you consider signing up and contributing to people? Let's take a look at the third objection. The union only supports Democrats and doesn't reflect my political values. Here are some of the things that have helped us address this objection. There are thousands of differences between us and our coworkers and fellow union sisters and brothers. What we all have in common are the things that stem from our employment, our union membership, and our experience as workers. AFSCME primarily fights for what we call the lunchbox issues, things like our pay, our pension, our health care, and all of the other things that are directly related to our contracts and our employment. AFSCME supports candidates based on their records and the positions they take on issues directly related to workers and working families. It would be a huge mistake to back only candidates of one political party instead of backing all viable candidates who share our values and agree with us on our issues. The political and ideological makeup of our membership is very diverse. And our endorsements are based on candidate performance on issues, not on partisan politics. So would you consider signing up and contributing to people? Let's take a look at a fourth objection. 
politics doesn't affect me, so why should I care? Here are some of the things that have helped us address this objection. Again, while we explore a path through this objection, please remember the formula for overcoming objections that you'll find on your screen and that we reviewed just a few moments ago. Politics doesn't affect me, so why should I care? Well, some folks like politics and some folks don't. Regardless, most of us don't get up in the morning and focus on political battles or set out to learn what our union's legislative and political priorities might be. Whether we are aware and involved or not, politics does affect each and every one of us. Our rights and privileges are granted or taken away by politicians every day, as well as things like our salaries, our benefits, time off, health care, pensions, job safety, funding for services, and support for our families and our communities. Whether or not we are involved, politics is alive all around us. So it's up to us to choose between sitting back and stepping up. We have to choose between being victims or victors, between sitting in a seat at the table or settling for a place on the menu. So would you consider signing up and contributing to people? Finally, let's take a look at another objection. It's a big waste of time and money. Labor is taken for granted. So why bother at all? Here are some things that have helped us address this objection when we've encountered it. Politics is all around us and dramatically affects every one of us every day of our lives. Political action and people pack are essential ingredients of a healthy, strong union. It seems like the news is constantly filled with stories of failed politicians or people stabbing other people in the back. Well, one way to avoid being stabbed in the back is to avoid the candidates you know will do so to you. By standing on principles and issues and not backing and, and only backing candidates who genuinely support us, we are much more likely to win on our issues. Avoiding the whole political process because of a few bad politicians only turns over more power and influence to those who want to take from us. So let's stand together and let's get involved together in the fight. A little bit from each one of us does add up to a considerable amount of power and influence. So would you consider adding your voice and your resources and signing up and contributing to the People Pack? Let's take a moment to test our knowledge. True or false? People Pack is an optional program. All right. In the sense that People Pack is, by law, a completely voluntary program, the statement is true. But if we didn't have the People Pack, we'd be going into legislative and electoral battles with one hand tied behind our backs. A weaker or non existent presence in the political arena would also weaken our contracts and would result in weaker work rules. People is, in a way, an option we cannot afford not to choose. Take a look at another question. True or false? AFSCME is a union made up of liberal Democrats that generally supports liberal Democrats. This statement is false. AFSCME is a strong labor union that draws its strength from a very diverse group of members. Our members come from all corners of the nation and have very different personal and political views. What we have in common, our so-called lunchbox issues, is what we fight for. Our battles are fought for issues, not politicians. For public sector workers, political involvement allows us a chance to do what no one else can do to elect our bosses, whether they are politicians who are directly elected by voters or the agency heads who are appointed by those politicians, our voice in politics presents us with a unique opportunity. For private sector workers, politicians approve or abolish laws that govern whether we can bargain collectively. They also set budgets and policies that determine what types of services are allowed and funded for retirees, 
Political activity is vital. It's essential. It is the only way we can protect the pensions, the benefits, and all the things we have worked a lifetime to earn. So whether it's on the national union level, the council level, or the local union level, we must all increase the amount of time and attention we apply to recruiting activists and recruiting contributors to the people program. The program is again completely voluntary and remember most union members will join if they are only asked to do so. Most people contributors are also involved in other activities that help us build a strong and healthy union. So having a face-to-face -face conversation about the union and recruiting a people contributor in one conversation reaps several rewards. Help us set the table and hang on to the seat we have at that table. It is as easy as having a simple conversation with a coworker. Well, there you have it. That's our presentation. And now, if there are any questions, comments, or concerns, we will open up your microphone. So if anyone has a question at this time, if you could please raise your hand so that I can unmute your mic. Billy wanted to know what is the acronym for people mean? What does it mean? Oh, well, uh, people was initially uh, created back in the 1970s as a response to the creation of the Federal Election Campaign Act, which was a response to Watergate. At that time, AFSCME primarily represented public employees. So People PAC um, originally referred to uh, public employees organized to promote legislative equality. Well, as you know, the union changed as the times changed, and we no longer represent exclusively public employees. So the acronym stood for public employees organized to promote legislative equality, but we now just refer to it as the People PAC, so that we're not excluding uh, significant segments of the population of our membership. Good historical question. Jessica Huffman asks a question, when is it okay to talk to coworkers at work about Apps Me Strong? Uh, there are some uh, work sites where um, we are allowed to speak with workers about union matters. Um, at any time, and uh, they're not as frequent, uh, frequently found as we'd like, but remember, uh, remember where those places are. So there are places where you know, we can talk about union programs. Apps Me Strong is a union campaign and a union program. Barring that, um, there are uh, break times, there are lunch times, there are areas where employees are allowed to congregate off the clock um, and discuss uh, anything at all. Um, so, uh, you know, either one of those occasions or a mixture of them would be uh, most appropriate. Okay. Kalia typed in, which council is most successful with people? Can you provide best practices? Um, council 31, Illinois Council 31, actually raises more uh, direct people contributions than any other council um, in AFSCME. Um, and approximately 25% of their members are enrolled and contribute to the people program at the MVP level or higher. And that's, uh, again, the MVP level is a level where um, someone contributes at least $100 per year uh, to the people program. Their best practice is to, to, to make it clear that uh, raising people contributions, like organizing and like dealing uh, directly with our members, um, is everybody's job. So if two people are gathered together having a union conversation, half of that conversation is devoted to organizing and half of that conversation is devoted to people. Um, it's a lot easier than, again, people would think. Um, the hardest part about organizing members and engaging folks in one-on-one, -on -one, eye-to-eye, face-to-face conversations is starting. Um, but once you start, um, you'll find that it actually uh, operates and runs very smoothly and uh, we're able to connect with our members and build a healthier, much stronger union uh, than we would have if we were not engaging our members on a regular basis. Um, Tony wanted to know, when the majority of the membership is detached from politics, politics, is this presentation the best way to speak to them about people? Well, this presentation is a, is a way to help us discuss uh, objections that people might have to politics and the program 
and it's a way to help us figure out how to actually connect with members who we're not currently connecting with. Uh, so uh, it's a good it's a good start. Um, and, and the only way that we're going to uh, introduce the notion of the union and the union's political program to folks who are not connected to it is by engaging them on a regular basis uh, in one-on-one, -on -one, eye to eye, face-to-face -face conversations. Okay, well, Leanne has typed a question. Uh, we got a lot of pushback on common issues, like Jerry mentioned, but not able to reach those who are turned off by our union support for social issues that they do not believe in. They do not see the connection of human rights. Do you have any suggestions for these folks who believe we go much farther than common issues? Well, one of the ways to do so is to, to keep your primary focus on the lunchbox issues, the things that we all have in common, whether we're of a certain um, ethnic group or a certain orientation or a certain gender or a certain religion. Um, focus first and foremost on what it is that we have in common. And talk with folks about the threats, the very direct and dramatic threats that we're facing to those lunchbox issues, to the things that we're having in common. And then hopefully you'll be able to overcome their other objections to things that we're doing that may run contrary to their personal values or their personal political views. We have to engage in a common fight about what it is that we have in common and hopefully focus on that much more than we focus on the things that make us different from one another or the things that perhaps divide us, the things that we believe uh, differently from how uh, someone else believes. Whether we believe you know, one thing about a social social issue, while our coworker believes uh, something completely opposite of that, has very little bearing on attacks to our salaries, our benefits, the services that we provide, um, our right to organize and bargain collectively, and the very existence that we have as a as workers and working families. Let's focus on what it is that we have in common and try to avoid the temptation to focus on those so-called wedge issues or things that. Uh, keep us uh, divided because we're different from one another. Um, I just wanted to know some incentives or ideas on getting our current people members to become people champions. Um, I know we have that program now and uh, we're trying to implement it in Iowa. Thanks for the question, Morgan. Um, Something motivated these folks to join and contribute in the first place. And I think, uh, you know, if you go back to the way you spoke with them, and, and Iowa Council 61 has a fantastic program um, and uh, a long and storied tradition of engaging folks eye to eye, face to face, one on one, about not only the people program, but about every aspect of their union mission and their existence as workers and working families. I think if you go back to the original conversations that you're having with folks and figure out what it is that actually motivated them to do, uh, to take that step, the hardest step is the first step. Um, when the battles that we were facing perhaps were not as strong as they are now, um, go back to that and figure out what that motivation was and renew the conversation. Um, somebody who's already giving, um, especially if they're giving at the MVP level, they're demonstrating that they care, that they are willing to do something to help not just themselves but their union sisters and brothers and other workers, co-workers who may not have seen the light and may not be members of the union. Um, so go back to the original motivation and have a conversation with them again talking about how serious the challenges are now maybe compared to what they were when the people first signed up um, and, and encourage them to support and step up. Um, they're already in the fight. Let's step it up just a little bit more to a new level. Hi, Philip Brown. Hi, yeah. Uh, my question is uh, in relation to the um, backstabbing that uh, response that we've already discussed. Now, uh, when I went out and just visited some locals recently, their issue wasn't about uh, being stabbed in the back from candidates who we know won't support us. It's from supporting candidates like in the example that I keep getting referred to is in Massachusetts, uh, we support Governor Deval Patrick. When his administration came in, it instituted the GIC. The GIC, which is the Group Insurance Commission, has resulted in abrogating uh, the union's bargaining rights, especially with respect to health insurance, and essentially has resulted in increasing health insurance costs to our employees. 
It is. Uh, that's a very good point. It, it's uh, very, very rare that we are going to encounter uh, someone who agrees with us 100% of the time. So we are involved, again, involved in politics to protect the core set of issues and values that we have. And someone is going to win an election and someone is going to lose an election. And if, if one candidate truly reflects most or all of our values and carries carries our issues with them, that's the person we're going to support. Now, sometimes they're going to make decisions and they're going to take votes that go uh, away we would you know, not like those uh, to result in. Um, sometimes that's because we haven't been involved and we haven't lobbied them, we haven't let them know how we and our fellow union sisters and brothers truly feel about something. And other times they actually make a decision um, to go against the positions that we have expressed on behalf of ourselves and our fellow union sisters and brothers. Uh, when that happens, uh, when someone takes a vote or makes a decision against us, we truly have to roll up our sleeves and determine if the outcome of that one decision um, was something that should, has and, and should uh, sour our entire relationship with that politician or elected official. And those are very uh, often very difficult decisions that the leaders of our, our affiliates and the leaders of the National Union have to make. Um, so there, there is no guarantee that someone's going to be with us 100% of the time. There are folks who, who do vote with us 100% um, of the time, but, uh, but uh, there, there are not that many. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't know if that helps or not. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit um, more expansive than saying, well, you know, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. But um, it, it, is, it is very difficult. Um, you know, some folks, you know, look at one situation and want to just sort of, as, as we talked about, I think briefly, just step out of the political process entirely. And while that, that just hands over even more power and influence to the folks who are really out to get us. So it's a, it's a very difficult, uh, very difficult process. And it's a, it's a, it's a year-long process. Most folks don't focus on politics until right before election time. When in fact the elections are the are the shortest period um, of sort of the political cycle, and it's that what someone does in their term of office that really determines whether we're going to be hurt or harmed. Um, so we have to be involved continuously and make sure that they know what our positions are. We have to know what's pending and make sure that the uh, the needs and the desires and the demands of our members, our fellow union sisters and brothers, and the folks in our families and our communities are expressed and truly heard and understood. Thank you for taking the time to answer my question. Thank you. Ryan wanted to say that um, what he's hearing from a lot of the members is that they believe our union doesn't care about them. How can we show them that our union does everything that it does because that is the number one goal? The best way to do that is to speak with them and to engage them and to be with them. Um, some folks think that they can get a job or join a union and um, that things are going to run on automatic pilot. Uh, that's not how a union operates. That's not how we organize folks. That's not how we build strength and that's not how we build power. The only way we can accomplish any of these goals and to actually survive the coming battles is to engage people one-on-one, -on -one, eye to eye, face to face about things that matter to them and about things that they can and must do to join us in meeting the challenges that were the very serious challenges that we're facing today. We do care and we need to care together. Tina Dillard had asked another question. Uh, she wanted to know, can a local vote to contribute to people once a year? Um, they can, but that would be illegal. Uh, so uh, let's tell them no. Um, they can, however, vote to uh, create a committee that will uh, go out and have organizing conversations and people conversations. They can, however, vote to uh, join the Apps Me Strong campaign or step up their efforts uh, that are existing as part of the Apps Me Strong campaign. They can vote to uh, individually contribute or increase their contributions from something less than MVP to MVP, or if they're already MVP, to something higher on the people champion level. Um, the individual limit uh, for contributions to the people program is five thousand dollars a year, and uh, I, I, it would be great if they uh, they voted to to to, to match that individually. But uh, let's be realistic about it. Um, they can pass the hat at local union meetings. 
Um, if somebody wants to throw in a dollar or two or five or ten or five thousand, they can certainly do that. Um, and they can also uh, vote or resolve to hold events um, that will help us raise more money uh, into the people pack. So um, we cannot uh, transform magically soft money into hard money, but there is a whole host of things they can do um, to raise more hard money, raise more of these people contributions, the direct contributions, um, in their positions as uh, leaders of their local unions. Uh, if they run out of ideas, they can certainly call uh, the political action department. They can call our uh, director for the, the people program, Sue Levitan, and we're going to have her number and contact information up um, at the end of this webinar. Good question. Okay, Susan has asked a question. Uh, I wanted to know how to speak with my members about this right to work that may be coming to Ohio with this people program. Well, one way to fight not just right to work, but any initiative or any notion or any idea that attacks us and attacks workers and working families and our services is to talk about how we can fight back. Um, so lay out the issue. Again, it's the formula. Lay out the issue, um, inform them as to what's going on, and then ask them to get involved in the, in the battle and in the fight. And if you go back, especially in Ohio, um, to no on issue two, and the battle that we waged, it seemed like forever there. Um, and it seemed like you know that the odds and the deck were stacked um, you know so greatly against us. We got together, and folks who maybe were never involved before became involved because we were able to look at them and speak with them and talk to them one on one, eye to eye, face to face about how serious that threat was. Um, the uh, right to work threat is just as serious um, as the threat that we did face um, in uh, your governor's first term. Um, there. So uh, again, follow the formula, lay it out to them, and, and try to encourage them now uh, before that's pending and before that, before we're facing the down the barrel, staring down the barrel of that initiative, um, try to get them involved and get them contributing now so that we can uh, perhaps build our strength um, for when we need to uh, use that strength in the battle that you're talking about with the right to work thing. Okay, Tina Dillard had a question. She says that I find here in Texas that people is difficult due to finances. What is a good way to overcome that issue? Uh, very good question. We hear this uh, quite a bit. Believe it or not, folks who make less are more inclined, we found, and it's not just with uh, people fundraising, but it's with any fundraising in general. Folks who have the less, the least, are more inclined to give the most <laughs> of their resources to uh, help fight something that they believe in. Um, so some folks do, again, they talk about, you know, they don't have the time or the money um, for this right now. Um, without being too trite or too cute about it, there's no better time than now um, to get involved and in, in, in make a contribution. Again, small contributions from a lot of folks do add up, as we've talked about repeatedly in this webinar. They do add up to a great deal. And they do allow us to actually get in and fight the battles that we need to fight with strength and with credibility in the political arena. You could also equate the contribution, the MVP level contribution, with other things that people spend money on. Um, how much is a candy bar? Um, if they're smokers, they're smoking a lot more every day or every two days than one week's contribution to the people program would be. Um, a cup of coffee is the roughly the equivalent of one week's worth of a people contribution. Direct contributions are the best way um, to have folks sign up. And uh, once they're signed up and it's a direct contribution, eventually they won't even think about it. It just keeps recurring, direct contributions through payroll deduction. Um, so think about what things already do and what they spend money on. Think about how little we're really asking folks um, for on a regular basis for them to become MVP level contributors to the people program. And they'll, they'll, they'll get it. Uh, again, the, the biggest objection um, to people is really not about the time and the money. Um, a lot of folks, the folks, most of the folks who don't already contribute really don't contribute because no one has actually had a one-on-one, eye-to-eye, face-to-face conversation with it. Most people who first say no, first say no because they don't know enough about the program and that's what this, that's a golden opportunity for us to have these conversations with them 
as part of the existing conversations we're already having with them, the organizing conversations as part of the Apps Me Strong program. Very good question, though. Thank you. Uh, one last question did come in. Are the contributions tax deductible? Um, no. We wish they were, but they are not. Uh, most political contributions, most political contributions are not tax deductible. In some states, uh, they are. Uh, some state level contributions are, but uh, for the most part, no, that's not going to happen. Let's see, one more question. What is the best example of why people work? The best example of why people work? Well, go back to some of the things that we've talked about already today, uh, why we have the program, the fact that the people program is the it's the fuel for our political activities that literally allow us to set the table for the fulfilling the rest of the mission of the union think about setting the political climate and how when we're involved in politics we're able to make better or more positive the political climate in which the rest of our activities occur so look at the difference between a positive political climate and a negative political climate so in, in places where we have been able to successfully set a more positive political climate, we're better able, we're more successful in negotiating contracts or enforcing existing contracts or settling grievances or differences we have with our employers or taking care of things like health and safety issues or enhancing benefits that we have or, or in some cases just hanging on and fighting against the very fierce attacks that come our way. Um, that's why we have the People Program. And we have uh, scores of occasions on a monthly basis where we are under uh, tremendously fierce attacks from folks who simply want to take us out of the business of negotiating and representing ourselves and standing up for what's right as workers and, and, and working families. OK, that's going to be it for the questions. Um, I'm going to encourage you all to please complete the exit survey. For those of you who have left questions that we weren't able to get to, um, we will answer them um, within the week um, to give you back a response. So I want to thank everyone again. I want to give a special thanks to our presenter, Jerry Fittler. Uh, please remember to take that survey at the exit of this webinar to receive your certificate of participation. You will be sent this certificate by the close of the following business day. You all had great questions, and I thank you all for your participation. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.